All new tonight, multiple families claiming their children have fallen ill due to a mold issue in ASU dorms. ASU saying that is not the case. ABC 15's Luzdelia Caballero spent months looking into students and parents' concerns and spoke with experts about the results of multiple lab tests. All new with 10. We spoke to a mom and dad who say their child who goes to ASU has been under specialist care for months and they believe it stems from mold issues in the dorms. They say ASU did not take care of, so they hired their own inspector to go in and take a look. I was like, Oh my God, that's all inside of the vent. These parents who don't want to share their names reacting to pictures their daughter sent them taken, they say, inside her ASU dorm room. And I was like, what? I mean, I was completely in shock. They tell us their child moved into a room in ASU's Palo Verde West dorm in August. Weeks later, they say she fell ill. Lethargic headaches. Uh, lost her voice for like two and a half weeks. They say she also experienced severe eye irritation. Dr. Sheree Dursum, an integrative and functional medicine physician at Integrative Medicine of Arizona, says that can be a symptom of toxic mold exposure. We can see vision affected where it's uh, really a differentiation between shades of gray. So they'll describe kind of blurry vision. Her eyes were just where the whites should be was just, it looked like it was almost blood. That's a common symptom, yes. Dr. Dursum didn't treat any of the students in this case, but says mold exposure falls in the realm of possibilities, listing the following symptoms. We see GI issues, uh, certainly uh, respiratory, chronic sinus issues, swelling, rashes, fatigue, sleep disturbances. It could be hair loss or they get a headache or sometimes they even get a tingling sensation or they become an anxious. These parents telling ABC 15 their daughter experienced the majority of these symptoms. So in October, they sent their child Petri dishes to collect samples from the vents and walls of her dorm. And within just a couple days, they were black. And I said, this is a much bigger problem than we originally thought. That's when they say they alerted the school to mold concerns in their child's dorm. Thinking their child wasn't alone, they also say they took to social media, asking if any ASU parents had similar experiences. We have over 100 parents that have shared stories with situations much worse than what we've experienced. ABC 15 was able to contact more than a dozen of those families sharing similar stories about students with health issues, many not wanting to go on the record. But one other parent wanting to remain anonymous did speak with us. They told us their child's symptoms got so bad when living in the Vista del Sol dorms, they decided to get their urine tested. That's the most valid way to test for mold. ABC 15 presenting the results of that November urine test from real-time laboratories to Dr. Dursum. They only test for toxic molds. That's what this test is. None of these are good molds. So you don't really want anything on here, but if it's lower than the criteria, then possibly we don't need to treat, but definitely these are all over the, the minimum amount. The urine test the parents shared from November showed toxic molds were found across the board. We have ochratoxin, uh, aflatoxin. Those are both from aspergillus that grows in the walls of uh, water damaged buildings. Okra toxin coming in double what's needed to be considered present in a sample. The trichothecene group almost four times the amount needed and gliotoxin nearly three times over. And you as a physician, if mm -hmm. you're looking at this and, and this is your patient that comes back with these results, would you be concerned? I would, yes. I would treat the patient. Meanwhile, these parents do admit that ASU sent a crew to their daughter's dorm in Palo Verde West in November to test for mold in clean affected areas. ASU told ABC 15 at the time in part, in response to mold and air quality concerns raised by students and their parents, ASU has hired a firm specializing in mold and indoor air quality to conduct mold air sampling in numerous residential halls. If the sampling indicates a problem, ASU will immediately begin remediation. These parents saying their daughter only seemed to be getting worse. I said, this is crazy. What is ASU doing about this? And to be honest with you, they're not doing much. So they tell ABC 15 they hired a company to come out to the dorms and do additional testing after ASU's tests were done in November. The CEO of Dwell Inspect of Arizona confirming with ABC 15 over the phone, he personally gathered those samples from the student's dorm room, air vent, and bathroom. That seems to be the most common place that uh, patients find mold. Those samples taken to a company called EMSL Analytical. The company wouldn't analyze the results for us, but we did get their 
expanded fungal report. The test's finding 16 substances in all, some of them which Dursum says can be toxic, like Aspergillus, Penicillium, Catonium, and Cladosporium. Many of the toxic molds are on here. Catonium is not a good one to have. The Cladosporium, not great, but it's not as toxic as some. We also took the results to another expert. What they're saying in plain English is there's evidence of actual growth. Michael Schrantz is an indoor environmental professional and owner of Environmental Analytics, who helped us break down what these results mean. So this is not about quantifying exposure, it's about IDing a source. We asked about the categories listed next to the molds in the EMSL report. You see some potentially toxic molds like Cladosporium listed as high, while others like Aspergillus, Penicillium, and Catonium listed as rare. You'll see that there's an asterisk next to a few of the uh, uh, quantities, the two high and the one rare, these samples show us there's evidence of actual growth, that this just isn't normal settling of background fungal structures. ASU says mold readings their tests found in November were within normal and safe levels, sending ABC 15 a statement in February with some more detail about their inspection, saying they hired a firm that conducted environmental air quality assessments on November 12th and November 15th. ASU's findings, there were no water or moisture sources or water damage observed during the inspection. There was some dirt and dust buildup on the air vents in some of the sampled rooms. There was no visible fungal growth observed during the inspection. The results for total airborne fungal spore concentrations did not indicate the presence of indoor sources of fungi. We took the school statement to Schrantz along with the EMSL report commissioned by the family, which is dated November 17th. The clear elephant in the room is one of discrepancy. Mold doesn't grow that quickly to go from nothing to everything. That means there was enough moisture and enough nutrients wherever they sampled for mold to grow. We wanted to know more about what Schrantz called discrepancies. There's a presence of growing mold in one report commissioned by the family, and ASU's claim that their tests in November did not indicate the presence of indoor sources of fungi. Then there are the pictures from the family and ASU's statement saying its November inspection did not find water damage or visible fungal growth. Why do you think ASU's test results were different than what EMSL's lab results showed? It can easily be attributed to they were looking at different areas. We also know that we're limited to the experience and knowledge of the inspectors. Then there's this. The family says when their daughter returned home from Christmas break, her symptoms improved. Dr. Dursum says that is also telling. That cues me into think that maybe there's mold. At this point, these parents are asking for more tests to be done. The contrast is too much. I think we need to get kind of a neutral third party out there to take a deep dive because clearly you have two different outfits claiming almost the opposite. Tests they hope can, at the very least, clarify the discrepancies Schrantz points to. Do that for the kids. Lustelia Caballero, ABC 15, Arizona. A university spokesperson says they have found some mold and mildew inside shower areas and in drywall where water damage occurred, but that was during other inspections at a separate dorm than those mentioned in Luz Delia's report. The school says it does take all mold concerns seriously and begins immediate remediation when needed. In a January statement, a spokesperson says ASU investigates each report to look for visible mold, water damage, elevated humidity, and other conditions that could promote mold growth. ASU also conducts an indoor air quality screening to evaluate the condition of the ventilation system. They add since the start of the 2021 school year, ASU has found no evidence of significant mold growth in the ventilation system of any residential hall. We posted the results of the lab tests mentioned in Luz Delia's story, along with the full responses from ASU. You can find all of that on the ABC 15 mobile app and on ABC15.com.